Today's story is Mufaro's Beautiful Daughters, an African tale by John Steptoe. A long time ago in a certain place in Africa, a small village lay across a river and half a day's journey from a city where a great king lived. A man named Mufaro lived in this village with his two daughters who were called Manyara and Niasha. Everyone agreed that Manyara and Niasha were very beautiful. Manyara was always in a bad temper. She teased her sister whenever their father's back was turned and she had been heard to say, Someday, Niasha, I will be a queen, and you will be a servant in my household. If that should come to pass, Niasha responded, I will be pleased to serve you. But why do you say such things? You are clever and strong and beautiful. Why are you so unhappy? Because everyone talks about how kind you are, and they praise everything you do, Manyara replied. I am certain that father loves you best, but when I am queen, everyone will know that your silly kindness is only weakness. Niasha was sad that Manyara felt this way, but she ignored her sister's words and went about her chores. Niasha kept a small plot of land on which she grew millet, sunflowers, yams, and vegetables. She always sang as she worked, and some said it was her singing that made her crops more bountiful than anyone else's. One day, Niasha noticed a small garden snake resting beneath a yam vine. Good day, little Nayoka, she called to him. You are welcome here. You will keep away any creatures who might spoil my vegetables. She bent forward, gave the little snake a loving pat on the head, and then returned to work. From that day on, Nayoka was always at Niasha's side when she tended her garden. It was said that she sang all the more sweetly when he was there. Ufaro knew nothing of how Manyara treated Niasha. Niasha was too considerate of her father's feelings to complain, and Manyara was always careful to behave herself when Mufaro was around. Early one morning, a messenger from the city arrived. The great king wanted a wife. The most worthy and beautiful daughters in the land are invited to appear before the king, and he will choose one to become queen, the messenger proclaimed. Ufaro called Manyara and Niasha to him. It would be... A great honor to have one of you chosen, he said. Prepare yourselves to journey to the city. I will call together all of our friends to make a wedding party. We will leave tomorrow as the sun rises. But my father, Manyara said sweetly, it would be painful for either of us to leave you, even to be wife to the king. I know Niyasha would grieve to death if she would part it from you. I am strong. Send me to the city and let poor Niyasha be happy here with you. Wafaro beamed with pride. The king was asked for the most worthy and the most beautiful. No, Manyara, I cannot send you alone. Only a king can choose between two such worthy daughters. Both of you must go. That night when everyone was asleep, Manyara stole quietly out of the village. She had never been in the forest at night before and she was frightened, but her greed to be the first to appear before the king drove her on. In her hurry, she almost stumbled over a small boy who suddenly appeared standing in the path. Please, said the boy, I am very hungry. Will you give me something to eat? I have brought only enough for myself, Manyara replied. But please, said the boy, I am so very hungry. Out of my way, boy! Tomorrow I will become your queen! How dare you stand in my path! After traveling for what seemed to be a great distance, Manyara came to a small clearing. There, silhouetted against the moonlight, was an old woman seated on a large stone. The old woman spoke. I will give you some advice, Manyara. Soon after you pass the place where two paths cross, you will see a grove of trees. They will laugh at you. You must not laugh in return. 
later you will meet a man with his head under his arm. You must be polite to him. How do you know my name? How dare you advise your future queen? Stand aside you ugly woman! Manara scolded and then rushed on her way without looking back. Just as the old woman had foretold, Manyara came to a grove of trees, and they did indeed seem to be laughing at her. I must be calm, Manyara thought. I will not be frightened. She looked up at the trees and laughed out loud. <laughs> I laugh at you trees, she shouted, and she hurried on. It was not yet dawn when Manyara heard the sound of rushing water. The river must be up ahead, she thought. Great city is just on the other side. But there on the rise, she saw a man with his head tucked under his arm. Manyara Raz passed him without speaking. A queen acknowledges only those who please her, she said to herself. I will be queen. I will be queen, she chanted as she hurried on toward the city. The Asha woke at the very first light of dawn. As she put on her finest garments, she thought how her life might be changed forever beyond this day. I'd much prefer to live here, she admitted to herself. I'd hate to leave this village and never see my father or sing the little Nayoka again. Her thoughts were interrupted by loud shouts and the commotion from the wedding party assembled outside. Manyara was missing. Everyone bustled about, searching and calling for her. When they found her footprints on the path that led to the city, they decided to go on as planned. As the wedding party moved through the forest, brightly plumed birds darted about in the cool green shadows beneath the trees. Though anxious about her sister, the Asha was soon filled with excitement about all there was to see. They were deep in the forest when she saw the small boy standing beside the path. You must be hungry, she said, and handed him a yam she had brought for her lunch. The boy smiled and disappeared as quietly as he had come. Later as they were approaching the place where the two paths across, the old woman appeared and silently pointed the way to the city. Yasha thanked her and gave her a small pooch filled with sunflower seeds. The sun was high in the sky when the party came to the grove of towering trees. Their uppermost branches seemed to bow down to Niyasha as she passed beneath them. At last, someone announced that they were near their destination. Niyasha ran ahead and topped the rise before the others could catch up with her. She stood transfixed at her sight first of the city. Oh, my father, she called. A great spirit must stand guard here. Just look at what lies before us. I, I never in all my life dreamed there could be anything so beautiful. Arm in arm, Niyasha and her father descended the hill, crossed the river and approached the city gate. Just as they entered through the great doors, the air was rent by piercing cries and Manyana ran wildly out of the chamber at the center of the enclosure. When she saw Niyasha, she fell upon her sobbing. Do not go to the king, my sister. Oh, please, father, do not let her go, she cried hysterically. There is a great monster there, a snake with five heads. He said he knew all of my faults and that he, I displeased him. He would have swallowed me alive if I had not run. Oh, my sister, please do not go inside that place. It frightened Niyasha to see her sister so upset. But leaving her father to comfort Manyara, she bravely made her way to the chamber and opened the door. On the seat of the great chief's stool lay the little garden snake. Niasha laughed with relief and fear. My little friend, she exclaimed, it's such a pleasure to see you, but why are you here? I am the king, Nayoka. And there, before Niyasha's eyes, the garden snake changed shape. I am the king. I am also the hungry boy with whom you shared a yam in the forest and the old woman to whom you made a gift of sunflower seeds. But you know me best as Nayoka, because I have been all of these. 
I know you to be the most worthy and most beautiful daughter in the land. It would make me very happy if you would be my wife. And so it was that. A long time ago, Niasha agreed to be married. The king's mother and sisters took Niasha to their house, and the wedding preparations began. The best weavers in the land laid out their finest cloth for her wedding garments. Villagers from all around were invited to the celebration, and a great feast was held. Niasha prepared the bed for the wedding feast from millet that had been brought from her village. Wafaro proclaimed to all who would hear him that he was the happiest father in the land, for he was blessed with two beautiful and worthy daughters, Niasha the queen, and Manyara, a servant in the queen's household. <laughs>